Good evening, boys and gurus. I have a very special story for you today. It's called The 50 Cent Piece. The young couple departed much later than they expected from their cousin's house. They were still miles from home when dusk fell over the narrow, windy road that they traveled. The horses were tired, the night was chilly, and there was no inn anywhere in sight. The husband clicked his tongue, thoughtfully, a sure sign that he was getting worried. His young wife laid a hand on his arm and suggested they seek out a house and ask for shelter for the night. The husband considered this proposal for a moment, then smiled in agreement. As they traveled the long, bumpy road that led from Massachusetts to New York, they started watching for a house. It was the husband who spied a light through the trees, just when his wife had resigned herself to a cold night spent in a parked carriage. He turned their horse onto a narrow dirt road leading up a hill. A pleasant little house stood at the crest. The light was shining cheerfully from the windows, illuminating a pretty, well-kept yard. The carriage was spotted as they drove up the hill, and an old man and his wife met the couple at the door. The old folks were in night clothes and had obviously been about to go to bed, but their welcome was warm. The elderly couple introduced themselves as Mr. and Mrs. Brown. The old wife took the young woman by the arm, tying briskly over her cold hands. You'll catch your death out in this cold damp air, Mrs. Brown exclaimed. Papa, throw some more wood on the fire. She whisked the young folks inside the cozy house and settled them in the comfortable chairs close to the fireplace before the young husband could explain the reason for their unexpected visit. As old man Brown built up the fire, the young man asked if they might rent a room for the night, since there was no inn nearby and there were still many miles from home. Rent will be ridiculous, exclaimed Mrs. Brown. You must be our guests. She ignored the young couple's protest and bustled out of the room to get them some hot food. Feeling overwhelmed by such kindness, the young man and his pretty wife supped up from the good meat and cakes placed before them and chatted merrily with the host and his wife. After the impromptu dinner, old man Brown and his wife escorted the weary couple to the room. As they parted for the night, the young husband once again volunteered to pay for the lodgings. Mrs. Brown stiffened, shook her head, reproachfully at the young man, and her husband then said, Nay, lad, tis but a small service we offer you. Keep your money and buy something pretty for your young lady. The travelers woke early and tiptoed out of the cozy house. The young husband hesitated a moment, and then left the shiny fifty-cent coin in the center of the kitchen table, where the old couple could not miss it. Then he hitched up their horse, and they went on their way. After several miles, they came to Spiegeltown in New York. Spotting an inn, they went inside and purchased breakfast. The innkeeper was a jolly fellow, who came over to talk to them as they ate. When the husband mentioned the nice old couple who had given them lodging the previous night, the innkeeper turned pale. Where'd you say that house was? The innkeeper asked. The husband described the location in detail. You must be mistaken, said the innkeeper. I know that place. That house was destroyed three years ago in a fire that killed the entire Brown family. I don't believe it, the husband said flatly. Mr. and Mrs. Brown were alive and well last night. After debating the matter for a few minutes, the couple and the innkeeper drove their carriage back out of town toward the old Brown place. The ground was quickly covered in bright sunshine, and the wife soon recognized the place when they had turned off the main road the night before. To her surprise, the narrow lane was overgrown with weeds, and dead branches crackled under the carriage wheels as they turned into it. She glanced uneasily at her husband and saw that he was equally disturbed. The track had not looked this way when they left earlier that morning. The carriage climbed the hill to the crest, and as they entered the yard they saw a burned out shell of a house that had obviously not sheltered anyone for a very, very long time. 
This cannot be right, the wife exclaimed, climbing out of the carriage and walking toward the blackened ruin. This is the brown place, Innkeeper said. This is not where we stayed last evening, the husband insisted, slipping from the driver's seat to join the innkeeper on the ground. I must have mistaken the direction. And then the wife gave a terrified scream and swayed. Her husband leapt forward and caught her in his arms as she crumbled to the ground in a dead faint. Searching for the cause of her fright, the husband looked into the ruins and saw a burnt table with a shiny 50 cent piece lying in the center, just where he had left it.